It starts with just a strong wind from the south. It's enough for you to double check all the lines and make sure everything is secure. Because we are in an area known for strong wind, we've already removed the clears from the flybridge and the covers from the cockpit. In our small marina we are protected, but still the boats begin to dance. Then it starts to blow very hard, and the spray is lifted off the surface of the water and flung for hundreds of metres. The dock itself starts to jump around, and then the wind builds from a roar to a shriek. This is going to be a big one. The quiet little bay turns into a maelstrom. At times visibility is zero and the waves smash into the small rock barrier in front of the road. It's dangerous even on the land. This is what 60 knots looks like in a marina. At anchor it's frightening and it can lead to disaster. At sea, accompanied with the waves that come with these winds, the outcome is uncertain. We have to regularly check outside to see if the boat is okay. It isn't. One of the lazy jack lines has been torn apart by the wind and it's about to break. When it lets go the sail pack will fall and lines will flail around the mark. It has to be fixed now. The line has to be eased down and a second rope connected to bridge the damage and that has to be put in quickly until the wind is gone for a full fix. And so it goes on all day. Well, that was how it was in our winter marina in November. But that is getting a little ahead of ourselves. Before we got there, we cruised up the Ionic Sea and into the Adriatic Sea. The Greece of the Ionian was fun, and while the landscape changed compared to the Aegean, it was mostly very similar. So we're not going to plod through footage of more islands and villages. There were anchorages that were so crowded that you could almost step from one boat to another. We played like children in the warm waters as perfect days melted by. We tied up to town quays where you can step off the boat straight into a restaurant and toured local wonders. Although sometimes things weren't exactly what you expected village here, the most photographed village in Greece, which is understandably very busy, nice little seaside restaurant, and it's lovely. The thing is, I've ordered a burger. Where's the bread? There is no bread. <laughs> My favourite was Kofu. This last part of Greece in the Ioni has a very special feeling. There is life and the movement everywhere. There are historical signs to see that are a reminder of how power was exercised in the old days. The architecture is really beautiful and I was impressed by the variation and the beauty of it all. Kofu is a city that is very well worth visiting. Our 90 day allowance in Europe was running short. We still wanted to visit Croatia and also to tour the Balkan countries by road. So it was time to get out of the Schengen zone and head towards the old Soviet backwaters of Albania and Montenegro. Neither of us know a thing about Albania. The reports from other cruises on Czech Forum did not sound very good. There is as much coast in Albania, and the stories of corrupt officials making life hard for yachts had us a little worried. Our experience was completely different. The country is still catching up financially, and there are still some authoritarian rules to follow, but it's a lovely place. 
Our agent in the entry port of Saranda was super helpful and she made our entry quite seamless. We caught up with our Aussie friends on Libby and together had a day driving around the south of the country. It was all pretty cool. We only spent a week in Albania because it has a very short coast and not many places to stop. We totally enjoyed our stops here. The port city of Darius was a real treat. Great food and wonderful people in the town. Right. So we have an Albanian tasting plate here and a whole bunch of things here. We We're just walking around, it's fun. We took a local bus to the capital of Tarana for a day and that was so interesting. Tirana is a fascinating place. It's big and busy and they have a great sense of preservation. The old air raid shelters still punctuate the cityscape and one is given over to a memorial to the horrors of the communist secret police period. It's very sobering to descend from these dark cells filled with memorabilia and stories of time that cannot be forgotten. We checked into Montenegro from Albania for a week. But we will save that country for later because we will be back there to put KCRs to bed for the winter. Our next destination was Croatia. This is one of the most beautiful cruising destinations in the world. Countless sheltered anchorages with clear waters and cities that are stunning from any viewpoint. Dubrovnik, for example, is every bit as amazing as people say. The old town is the biggest and the best preserved example of a walled city from the Middle Ages that you can see anywhere. Walking its streets and poking into churches and down narrow lanes gives a great idea of how power was demonstrated hundreds of years ago. when he was in jail, his jail cell. And you can look at him, but it's just a picture. There's a small museum in Dubrovnik that provides a look into what life was like in the communist era. And like in Albania, here they remember the lighter side of life in that time, and the visitor is also constantly reminded that Yugoslavia was different and more relaxed than other Soviet states. Jacqueline is taking a virtual reality tour of a carbon brush factory. That's right, it's a carbon brush factory. She's looking around. Hello, I'd like to change some currency, please. I oh, know, I'd like to buy some cigarettes. And like the Yugoslav communist drink cocktail. It's very good. There is a lot to love about a visit to Croatia. From Dubrovnik, we sail the wonderful coastline to the city of Split. our meals on the boat because eating out gets very expensive very quickly 
Sometimes, if we see a place that looks nice, we'll dress up and have a night out. This place on the water in the village in Croatia was very special. They even made their own wine and grew their own oysters. Yeah, it's a single vineyard. They grow the grapes; they're very small, and he makes it the way his father made it, and they just make it in 400 liter vats. And it tastes like a an oak chardonnay or a chablis. It tastes really quite crisp and、uh, fresh. It's very nice. I, I take the picture.、Also. Okay. Because the night and this is not to put under the bed. Octopus under the bell, iron bell. Is a charcoal. It's a traditional, ancient way of preparing. Further north, we come to the city of Split. It's a really cool, laid-back place where you can visit old fortifications in the hills, and also see some very well-preserved Roman structures in the city that have been integrated with other buildings over the centuries. Looking around, there was a commotion, and it turned out to be a wedding ceremony. They have fun weddings in Croatia. Behind us, we're going to make our return trip to Dubrovnik to check out of Croatia and then head back to Montenegro for our、uh, winter berth. So finally, because we are going south and most of the time we're going north these days, we've got a breeze. Fifteen knots is coming in from the northwest. It's a bumpy. There's a short chop, but、uh, not worrying too much about that. We're doing six and a half to seven knots. In 13.7, so I'm pretty happy with that. Good day for sailing for a change. In Montenegro, where Kathy Oz will spend the winter, we take a couple of days to tour around the wonderful Bay of Cotta before taking her to the marina for a rest. We started the year in Thailand, so it's been a big trip this time. We've sailed across the Indian Ocean, visited the Maldives and Africa, 
Been among the very first cruisers to be welcomed to Saudi Arabia, visited Jordan and passed through the amazing Suez Canal. We checked out Cyprus and Turkey and spent lazy weeks rambling through Greece before visiting Albania, Croatia and Montenegro. It's hard to imagine that it hasn't even been 12 months. Now it's time for some much needed boat work, including me finally learning how to do rope splicing, among other things. After that, we will take a road trip around Eastern Europe for a couple of weeks and then head back to Australia for the home summer. We'll be back in late February to get Cathay Oz ready for her new adventures in the new year.